Hey everyone, this is David with Tigner Adventures, and today we are in Quartzsite at the seminar tent. And we are going to be doing a seminar today on RV life, Trip Wizard. We're here today with RV Life, uh, and that's uh, tools that make camping simple. We're in booth 319, which is down the center aisle from here, going down the center aisle on the right-hand side. And I have my laptop there set up, and we actually, I mean, the internet's very spotty, but you know, as long as the internet works here and there, then if you have questions and things, then I'm happy to even bring up, you know, and do little example trips or whatever, show you things, or or you know, answer the questions that you have on different things for those of you that are members already. Uh, can I have a hand or a uh, yeah, raise your hand if you're new to RV life. Okay, cool. So one of the cool things about uh, RV life is that the discount for new people, so, <laughs> so welcome there. But uh, anyway, um, my name is David. My wife is back there. She's kind of managing the, uh, the camera because she's videotaping uh, this presentation. Uh, we um, make up Tigner Adventures. We're a YouTube channel. We travel all over. We're been, we have been full-time now for six years. We're starting our seventh year. And we started off with this product our second year. Like a lot of you that were brand new, we didn't know what we were doing our first year for sure. And we were looking at different things and we tried Googles and I really liked Waze. I really liked, you know, I liked all those cool little things until they got me into some places that were just not very appropriate for a 50 foot long rig. I refer to this as the Cadillac of trip planning. It does everything. And it's not necessarily for everyone, but what I'm gonna tell you today is what makes up RV Life Pro. So RV Life Pro is a subscription-based service. It's $65 and there's a number of things that it includes. Okay, and I'll go through what those are in just a second. The cool thing about a subscription-based service, and you can see that most software companies are now going to this method, is that you always have the most current software available to you. So that's cool, is that uh, it's not like you buy a software package and then you have it and then you gotta pay you know, some upgrade fee in a year from now to, to uh, get the next version um, or you, know, you just don't have the updated maps or whatever. This one here, you're paying that subscription fee each year and you keep up with the current things. Your maps are always current, everything's always current, all the new options and everything. And the cool thing I was telling you, if you're a brand new person for your first year, you can get 25% off that. So it's like $45 or something. And uh, you just use that code TIGNER25, you get 25% off. RV Life Pro comes with the RV Life app. That runs on your phone. And it actually uses everything that I'm gonna be talking to you about that we do on the internet, on the browser. Okay, the trip planning, which is the second one, is all done on a browser at this point. They are gonna be coming out with a version, a way to do it on your phone through the app. But you can actually run this trip wizard on your phone through the browser on your phone or a tablet or on your computer. And I like to just sit, you know, in these winter months when we're not going anywhere anyway, we just sit down and we just start planning our trip in the comfort of our living room or wherever we're at. And we're not stressed out as we're traveling. It's already done when we go to travel. And we use the life, the app, to do all of our navigation. So that can be done on our phone or a tablet, depending on the size of screen that you actually want. Uh, RV Life Pro also includes uh, campground reviews. So every time all the members go out someplace to uh, um, stay somewhere, then one of the things it does is it comes up and says, give, you, give a review of where you just stayed. And so as members, you know, we're putting all those reviews in there and we want you to be honest because we, you know, everyone's looking at those, you know, and if the place is a, not a good place, then put that down, okay, so everybody knows. Uh, so that's what those reviews are. And I should actually back up for a second. We are in our uh, YouTube channel. We are here representing RV Life. We actually don't work for RV Life. So, uh, but I know quite a bit about it. And if I don't, then I'm just like you. I send an email off to support at rvlife.com. And they are really good at you know, getting back to you to answer different questions and things. You get as much access to support as I do. So don't think that I'm any special person here so but I'll tell you they usually are back to me the same day 
and and then they just ride on it. Um, I had an issue not too long ago that I entered the a support ticket and they were back to me within an hour and they said we have noticed this issue and I and I said you can access my map you can see the issue it was with elevation at the time it was just going blank they said we're trying to tie this down and everything and I said well I'd like to have this work for sure you know because I, I use it all the time and anyway they finally came back um, it was like a week and a half later they came back and says we have now found that and we got it fixed and so, I mean, they just kept following up with me and sending me emails and having me check other things and stuff. So I think their support is really top notch. They do not offer phone support, just to get that question taken care of too. Everything is through that email, but once you email them, then you're, you know, you got a nice um, dialogue going on through that email and they just go back and forth and you can reply and go back and forth as much as you want. So they just said, you know, as a, as a small company, they've only got about 50 employees that you know, it doesn't even make sense when big companies aren't even doing phone support anymore. So that's why they don't offer it either. But um, anyway, back on, so that was a little squirrel. Oh, oh. anyway, um, so uh, maintenance tracker is another piece of it uh, that they acquired a couple years ago and they are um, working on rewriting that right now. But what it basically does, it's a little better than using an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of your maintenance because this will actually email you when those maintenance periods come, you know, are due and everything. So that's all included. Uh, and you can put, uh, they have suggestions on things, but then you can put all your own things in there too. So it, it does work out pretty nice. And then the uh, next thing here, I'm just gonna jump over master class for a minute. I just wanna talk about communities first for a minute. Uh, they are actually owned by a company called Social Knowledge. That's the uh, parent company who has been around forever. And they've been creating their whole fame thing was just all these communities that you could be part of, whether it was part of an RVing community or a particular, we're Holiday Rambler, motorhomes, you know, you have a Holiday Rambler community. Uh, they, that's what Social Knowledge did before they acquired RV Life. And then they started doing other things and got the RV Life and the app and the maintenance thing and made RV Life Pro. Okay, so they've been there for a while. Those communities, that's the IVR2 forums, all kinds of forums out there on about anything you want to know about. And then the next thing, the last thing I want to mention is the uh, master classes. So the master classes is something that when you sign up, you have access to. And here's just some samples of those master classes. Uh, it's not just on how to use the product, it's how to um, boondock, it's how to, you know, you're a brand new RVer, what's some of the things you should be looking at and things like that. And they also send out emails, you can set up on, you know, to be on different emailing lists and they send out articles on an every day or every other day um, or I get, I'm on so many lists that I'm getting them every day so I don't know if it's the same group or if that one group just does it once a week but I get all these different articles I just look down to oh that's pretty interesting and then I read about that so they've got things going on constantly and they're constantly growing which is the the cool thing about this company so they're always coming out with new updates so they're not you know buying things to get rid of them like some other corporations where they you know change things or whatever these guys are actually adding to the product and making it better and so that's what's pretty cool and it's all done based on your input so if you send messages off to support at rvlife.com and say you know what you really need to do this they make a note of that and if enough of us start saying that then pretty soon they say we need to add that feature okay so that's what's important about all of us that are members you know being part of that development process is to let them know what needs to be done and how we're doing and everything. But they just came out with an October 9th update that says that uh, there's a bunch of things coming this, uh, this quarter of this year and that prepared us for all these new changes and things that they're gonna be, in, new features they're going to be introducing. So that's pretty exciting. Again, we're a YouTube channel, so we have a playlist that's dedicated to RV life. I do a lot of different videos and I, uh, training you on the different features. I start off from the basics of just how to create the trip all the way through to your ending experience. And I'm just going to go through a couple of those things this morning, just kind of explain some of the things that RV Life does. But it is so powerful. A lot of people say, oh, it's just such a major learning curve. Well, it depends on what you want to do. You know, if you want to create trips like I do, then there's a lot to it. Um, I do show you how to get started and do that, but you don't have to start be that elaborate to start off with. You can make it as simple as you want or as complicated as you want. 
So the first thing here, and this is just a little uh, five night stay here or four night trip. And you can see that this trip here is only 445 miles. We're going from Yuma, Arizona up to Phoenix. We stayed a couple nights up in there, you know, at, and you know, we had to go up there for some medical things. And then we went out to some uh, boondocker welcomes, you know, we stayed at and things like that. So we entered all that stuff in here, our gas stops. So I knew exactly what was going on and that's what I put in here. So, you know, it can be as simple as that or it can be as complicated as this. This is a little more complicated. This is our summer trip last year. Uh, we left Yuma, Arizona, went up through Utah, out through Wyoming and everything, and up into Canada, spent a month and a half going through Canada and everything. So we have all the stops in there, all our gas stops and everything, so that when the day comes to navigate, I use my phone for my navigation. I stick it right up on my window by my steering wheel and I look at it and it says these are all the stops you're going to today and I said okay let's get started and we go to the first stop whether it's a you know a you know roadside attraction I'm stopping to see or whether it's getting gas it's all listed there I don't even have to think about it my concern is on that day is driving so I just know where I'm going I don't I don't have to uh, think about where I'm going or anything and so that's a little bit more complicated trip that was 8,000 miles 184 nights so that was six months but now to get really crazy this is our trip this year. Wow. So we're going from here off to uh, Newfoundland, um, up into Canada. We'll be up in there for a few months. And we're going to be gone eight months, so 231 nights out. And we're going to be driving almost 13,000 miles. So the trip in there right now only has camping places, and I got almost all of those reserved now. The things I don't have in there yet that I still have to go back and add is all my gas stops and this takes care of everything it tells me when i need to get gas so i can add those all in again so when driving day comes i have nothing to worry about okay so now these all seem pretty complicated and everything so what i wanted to do is just show you how simple it can be because you don't have to be complicated you can have simple so i just created a trip here and when you create an account with trip wizard or with rv life you put in all the information about your rig, you know, the height, the weight and everything. So it automatically copies it through when you go to a new trip. So I can go in here and I can put in different information in there about my RV and how I want to actually travel. So in this particular case, I've, my rig is a 36 foot class A. I have a tow car, so I'm about 54 feet long. Um, I travel typically an average of 50 miles. Now that an hour and that's considering okay I'm gonna stop and at the rest stop or I'm gonna stop and get gas whatever we're kind of moving along about 50 miles per hour and I have this I don't have a radius on here right now but I'm gonna show you that in just a minute I'm just gonna show you how you can turn it on and off when you're actually in your mapping so that's a little different so uh, but on this trip here I'm just saying that we're gonna average one hour a day I normally put three hours there you can put whatever but we typically drive three hours a day but if you don't want to do it by hours, you want to do it by miles, you can put in miles there too. You can say, I want to drive, you can say it's a miles thing and I want to drive you know, somewhere between 75, 125 or 200 miles and it'll give you three different um, driving radiuses that you can look at as far as planning out your trip. So that stuff can be done on the fly at the time you uh, create the trip or it's just information that's stored in your um, account from when you created your account. Okay, so I just want you to know that you can modify that as much as you want. So when I'm in my actual map, I'm just kind of zooming over here. At the top right, we have this map settings. And I just want to show you where we turn on that driving radius if we're actually editing in our map. So at the top, we go to map settings. We have driving radius. We click on that. And that's where I have two different options for driving radius. So I can say I want it to just be the old classic which was just a circle, which is the way the crow flies, which I haven't found an RV that does that yet. But you know, um, that's the option, okay? So uh, it wasn't very intuitive because, you know, places, there's a lot of places there you could not get to, in this case, in an hour, all right? So then they came up with the advanced routing. So if we turn on advanced routing, you'll see that it looks really cool. So anyway, the advanced routing uh, changes it up a little bit because what it does is it uh, makes it so that these are all the roads that you can go down and on those roads that's the uh, how far you can get within that one hour okay 
So going from Yuma being in the center of this little splat that you see on the screen, this graphics, we can go north towards um, Quartzsite and 60 miles from Yuma is this uh, Kofa Wildlife Refuge. And so what I did is up at the top of the right screen, you can see there's a little tent up there and I clicked on that and RV Life threw out all the stuff that's available in that area of where I'm you know, kind of zoomed in. Now, one thing to understand about that is those are commercial things normally. Now, Kofa is a boondocking place, it's free. But most of them that you're gonna find in there is going to be like RV parks or campgrounds that cost money. That doesn't mean you can't put things in here because what you do is you can take things like Harvest Host or uh, Elks Lodges or you know people, you know, your family's home, you know. You can enter those all in at the top of the screen up here where it says, uh, right in the middle of the screen, it says search for a location or park. You just fill that in, GPS coordinates, address, whatever, and it will bring that up on your map and then you can add that to your trip. So you, you have best of both worlds. You have everything that they have in there. The cool thing about the stuff that they have in there is that you have a, all the campground reviews that we were talking about earlier, okay? So anyway, I wanna just add that one right there. So if I just go in there and click on that Kofa thing and I say add to the trip, I can then add that. And at this point, I don't have anything else in there, so I'm just gonna add it to the end of my trip. Um, and I'll show you another option uh, a little bit later here. But uh, I add that to my trip. I'm going to stay seven nights. And you'll notice that my little green graph has changed. It's now got Kofa as the center of it. And it's now reached out another uh, hour from that particular location. So I could just go and say, I'm in Yuma. Where am I going to go today? Bring it up and, and do that for one day. Go out there and camp for a week or whatever. And then before that week's over, then I could bring it up again and say, well, I want to go again for another hour. So about where can I go when I get ready to leave and then add it in there. So you can just do this as you go. You don't have to plan. You know, those of you that don't plan. Our, our first couple of years were tough because we typically don't plan. We had a timeshare that we owned that we never used because it was always full. And they called us up and said, how come you don't use this? And it says, well, you got to make the reservations three months or six months in advance. We never planned that far. And so that, that was very detrimental. So it does make it easier for planning if you've got to make reservations and things to plan ahead. But if you don't, this still works. Okay, so now I want, just wanted to show one option here that we left. We're going to leave Kofa and we're going to go up to the, up here on this freeway and go off to the right. There, instead of using the little campground thing, and or entering something in there automatically, I can also just right click on the screen and say create a custom stop. I can change this to be a satellite view so I could actually drill all the way down and see you know, some spot and just say I want to stay right here and just create a spot right here. And then you can add that on your map. So a lot of different ways to add your options in there. All right, so I create a custom stop. Again, I say seven nights and I add it to my trip. Uh, so again, now it's gone to that custom stop as the center of my graph, and I just continue on what, however you want to do. Now, normally the way I create my trips and what I've kind of gone through in my videos is that I typically say, okay, I'm going to start in Yuma, and what are we doing today? Uh, where, what's our goal this summer? All right, and um, this summer our goal is that we want to go to Newfoundland. So that was the first entry. I just arbitrarily, I went up to Newfoundland and said, show me what's up there. And I arbitrarily just picked a park because right now you can't reserve anything. It's too early. And they probably still have snow too. But anyway, um, so I just went up there, arbitrarily picked a spot and said, this is where I want to go. And I just made it a round trip. So right now I'm going from Yuma to Newfoundland. And let's see, that's going to be 80 hours of driving. <laughs> okay, if I just stay on that straight route. So it's kind of cool that it just shows me all that. But then I start going through and I start putting other places in there and I start developing the trip um, with that end point in mind that I'm going to get up to there and then I'm going to come back. Now, the issue that I ran in here, and I just finished a three video series about this whole planning stages and getting your reservations in early, which I thought was, uh, I was being very, very proactive. <laughs> start by January 1st because everything opens up January 1st. Well, we got our uh, tickets on the ferry going over this was like the middle of December, I called just to check in on it and everything, and there was one spot left. So we luckily got that spot. And then as I started going out to different places, 
Um, oh, we've been taking reservations for a year, so <laughs> I got to start planning next year's trip before I even take this year's trip. You know, it's it's getting really bad. You know, so, but um, anyway, I I started planning this out, and then my wife's looking at it, going, "Wait a minute," because I brought up this elevation thing here, and she says, "We're leaving in March." You know, all these people leave in March and then they're always posting on Facebook how much snow they have. It's like, so I start looking at this. We're going to be in Laramie, Wyoming, 8,000 feet in the middle of, uh, uh, or last week of April. It's like, uh, this might not work very well. So we don't, all our cool boondocking places are all going to be in snow. And she says, I don't want to go that way. And, and so switch it around. I want to go down through the south first. And it's like, I've already entered all this stuff. You know, could you have said that, you know, a couple of days ago or something? But anyway, so what I did was, you know, I kind of got in here to verify what she's talking about, right? This is up in um, Minnesota, and so I went into this campground, and I just wanted to show a couple things here really quick. My wife says, you get off the subject quite often. But anyway, I'm going to just show this to you. So park details. I go in here. It shows me all the details about that park. This is in Minnesota. And I really wanted to look at the weather, but I wanted to point out here just really quick that this is the overview of the park with their phone number and website and everything. And also you can look at reviews. This is where those reviews come into play as far as, you know, um, you can see what the prices people paid before and look at the last review to make sure how current that is. That's important. But I really wanted to look at the weather. So I look on the weather here and it says in April to March, we're going to be looking in the 50s. And it's 30s in the morning, so it's like, okay, dear, you're right. You know, we'll just have to do something different here. So I decided, okay, well, let's look here. We've got 145 nights that I've already got defined in the system. And I've also got 69 items listed. So on the left there, you see 69 items, 145 nights. And right there, it says round trip option. So I said, well, let's see how this works. So I clicked on the round trip option. And you've got two different options here. You can either just go straight back to a location or you can mirror your route. So I said, okay, well, just mirror my route. And so it mirrored my route. So now if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you can see that it's got all kinds of stuff up there now. And if you look at the bottom of the screen there, instead of being 145 nights, it's now 290 nights. So you can immediately see it mirrored my route. It completely doubled it. And on the left there, 69 was our last entry, but now it continues on. And then I went up here at the top of the screen where that little wrench is, is the trip tools. So I clicked on trip tools and down towards the bottom of that, you'll see it says delete multiple stops. So I clicked on delete multiple stops and I highlighted everything from number stop number two all the way through item number 69 there and I deleted them. So now if you look, now I'm back down to 145 nights and I'm going the opposite direction now. That many clicks and I've switched the trip around. I didn't have to re-enter all that stuff back in again. Pretty cool. This is something that most other mapping programs don't do very well at all. Okay. I want to show how easy it is just to move things around. Um, so in this particular case, I'm in Pine City, Minnesota. That's what I have highlighted there. And right above, oh, and by the way, this is my old map. So I'm still going up where it's cold just so you know. So I'm going from Pine City. I actually went to Tamarack and then to Pine City is the direction I'm going. So I highlighted that and I actually dragged it up above Tamarack. So now you'll notice that Pine City, we're getting there on um, May 14th and we're not getting to Tamarack now until the 17th. So I can easily just drag things around and automatically changes all the dates. I don't have to go back in there and edit each individual one. Uh, this is all based on how many nights you're going to stay somewhere. And if you don't lock anything in, you can move it all around as much as you want and you never have to go back and re-edit anything. And it redrew the map over there on the right-hand side. So now we're not going through Minneapolis, we're going off to the side. Um, so we like that path a little bit better. Now, if I decide that I want to stay longer in Pine City, I can bring that, I can just edit it and I, up at the top right there is three nights and I want to add some more nights. Well. If I have some reservations in there, then I try to add more nights. I'm gonna make this number four and try to add it. It automatically knows you don't have enough room to add more nights. So that's another cool feature is it's actually tracking everything. And it will never let you book um, overlapping. So if you're booking reservations and things, you don't have to worry about messing up and, 
and you know having a reservation that's uh, you know at the same time as another reservation. If I decide okay I'm just going to stay at Pine City there and I just want to lock it in, I can just go into the tool lock trip right there and just click on the little lock and it will just bring the trip up and, and it will change it instead of having those little dots on the left that you can click on to move things up and down it changes it to a lock and now you can't move that anymore it's locked into those dates the other cool thing is is if I go up here above Pine City and I just delete that West Rich RV park that I was looking at you'll notice now that um, I deleted that one RV park this automatically comes up and says you have one night that's not planned anymore so you know you don't have to plan every night if you don't want to you could just lock in and say you know I'm going to be in Pine City on this date and and I'm going to meander around for a week or two so I might have seven nights there that's not planned but I'll find some place and I can add them later or, or whatever I mean it's very very flexible and that's pretty much it so again the um, code Tigner25 saves you 25 percent for you, those of you that are new and I'd be glad to answer any questions. I don't know how I did on time, but, uh, oh, just about time. So, but I'll answer any questions you got. Yes, sir. Can you show us how, if you took that map and you wanted to share it with somebody? Okay. So let me, I was going to do a live demo, okay. <laughs> but, you know, you don't know how live demos work uh, or when you don't have internet. So let me just bring up a browser here really quick. Um, and we'll try that and we'll see what we can find out. So, um, our, I should have had this up actually. It would have been easier. What but let I, me. What I'd like to see is how you share it with someone who has the program. Okay. Yes. So, I'll show you that. So, why that's coming up, and um, let's see what we're doing here. Oh, we're on fast internet. <laughs> so, and it's uh, thinking about it. So I do bring this up at the, in our booth too. And so we'll wait and see if we can get it to come up here. Um, but let's go ahead. While that's coming up, I'm going to go around for a couple other questions. We'll come back. Yes. Can you actually reserve the So you're just reserving it as far as your map is concerned. Um, on that overall screen, overview screen, you had the phone number and website of the different places. And so you do need to go into those places you know physically and talk to them to actually make your reservations and but once you get the reservation number and everything then you can come back in here and lock it in or you know and put in the reservation information so one of the things I do is is um, I wish that's working but <laughs> um, so on my phone and I can show you this um, when I'm navigating um, that's interesting I might did I type it wrong or um, what's that? Um, so on my phone when I'm navigating, one of the options that comes up is whatever notes you put in for that particular stop shows up on your on that trip. You know, as far as navigate and notes, and so I always put my reservation number and my site number and everything right there. So when I get somewhere or I'm going, I can just click on notes and I have all my information right there. But yes, you do have to go out to physically do all that but you can set and plan everything ahead like for example we have everything planned in um, Canada and even though we can't make reservations yet so as time goes on and they start opening up those different provinces then we'll go out and start reserving them and if we can't get that one we'll move it but we can easily move and add stops delete stops and everything else it makes it really simple for the planning part of it so so yes shows you have no internet it's yeah. just you have to have it near it. You have this, this so device. the planning portion of it, you do have to have internet. You, it runs from a web browser, okay? So when you're planning, it's all on the web browser. But when you um, log in on your phone with the same ID and password that you have for the, the uh, online service, then everything on your phone matches that. And at that point, it gives you the option to download the maps. So you can download all the maps for the area that you're going, the states you're going to be going through or the provinces or whatever. And then that way, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and have no service of any kind, it still works perfectly. And we went out through, I mean, between uh, Banff and Jasper, there is no cell service. And we use this a lot through that whole thing. And I can attest that it works just perfectly. <laughs> so, yes. I was going to give you advice on height restrictions and poles. So one of the things off to the right, I don't, let me see if I can connect to my phone, which is... Uh, 
Tony, this is, where'd Tony go? It's Tony's fault. All right. So I got it all in there, right? So it's just um, it's just weird how the internet works around here. So sorry about that. Um, but over on the right hand side, um, you got a research option that shows up on the screen. In fact, while that's trying to come up, let me let me see if I can bring up a. Um, let me go back here and put this back up here. Oh, right there. So on the, on the right there, you can see where it says research. If you click on that, then it brings up a lot of different research options. You can look at parks, you can look at um, um, different uh, special interest, points of interest, things from gas stations to amusement parks or whatever. Um, you can look at, uh, over on the far right, it says hazards. So you can put it in there and, and select the, the hazard, which is gonna be like typically, you know, some kind of hazard, you know, it's usually bridges and things like that. Um, it'll bring up little yellow things around on your map based on those. So uh, it, it, it won't, when you're routing, it automatically routes you away from all those things. And the reason you'd probably want to be interested in those if you decide to get off the freeway, for example, and go somewhere, then it's nice to know that there's a low bridge or low whatever, or weight limit or things like that. So um, you can actually bring that up, you can see it, but it won't route you that way when you're physically doing the routing. So it avoids that based on the size, weight, and length of your rig when it's actually designing the map. But there is a feature on there that you can drag your routes to wherever you want to go. And once you start dragging them around, then you start bypassing some of those uh, things that uh, restrictions and stuff as far as being RV safe. Although if you say avoid tolls, for example, uh, you can drag yourself over to a toll road. Tolls would, tolls would be not just toll roads, but like uh, where you're driving through a national park and things like that. So we're up at Lake Mead and I'm coming down from Utah and I want to go to Lake Mead, which is a national recreation area. That's a toll to get in there. And so I have to physically drag my route over there. And then the first chance it gets to get me back on the freeway, it sends me back to the freeway because I have that filter turned on that says avoid these tolls. And so I have to do a few different drags to get it to stay there, um, or I just turn that, that piece off of it. But you can put a lot of different restrictions on there, whether you want to use a highway or avoid dirt roads or whatever, you fill in those different filters and then that's how it's going to route your trip. So, okay. And let's see, where are we at? Oh, whoops. Yeah, for some reason we are not getting any internet here at all. Let me try to turn this off and see if we can get that to reload up again. Um, yesterday afternoon, somebody was trying to show somebody the elevation stuff and we just could not get the internet to work and, and we're just limited to what we got. So let's see. All right, so we're back on there. Let's uh, refresh this. Any, yes, ma'am. Does it locate the gas stations for you? So, you can, um, there's a couple ways that you can do it. Um, through the points of interest, there's a lot of different gas stations there, like Love's and, and um, uh, you know, those major ones, okay? You can also, um, wherever you're going to be, like Tucson, for example, you can right click, and one of the things that came up before there it said create a custom stop. There's two other options on there. One of us check fuel prices. The other one is go into Google Street View. So you have both those options available by right clicking on that particular area. So if you check the fuel prices, it brings up a whole nother screen and it lists all the gas stations in that particular area and, the, and what the price of whatever it is that you're looking for. You say, I want diesel, I want gas, whatever. And it'll bring all those up and it shows the last transaction date and time that that price was. So you can see that it's fairly pretty much almost real time that you're getting information on what the prices are in that particular area. Yes? So in the route choices we have it, um, it asks if you want to match your plan trip exactly or allow route changes. Yeah. What's the difference? 
So when you are designing your, your trip, um, one of the things that you can do for sure is to drag your routes and do, you know, you're designing it the way that you want it. Um, so if you say, you know, this is how I want to go and everything, then you want to match your trip exactly. All right, because that's what you put in there. If you don't match it exactly, then it's going to just route you to the best RV safe way to get there. And now you're not going the, the direction that you want to go. For example, for us, we want we don't like to go through Vegas. We like to go across, you know, by, um, you know, the Lake Mead, you know, just take that meandering drive through there instead of trying to beat the traffic down in L.A. I mean, down in uh, Vegas. And so uh, if we say match our route exactly and I planned it to go around Lake Mead, then that's how it's routing me. So that's, that's the difference. There. And the thing to remember on any of this is, first of all, no GPS is perfect. Okay. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is perfect either. They all have things that happen. But one of the things I really like about this one is now they come up and they show you the trip and you can actually click on a thing that shows you step by step where it's going. So you can, you know, make sure that this is how, it, you know, you can look at the screen and go, yep, that's what I'm doing. And I'm not sending off somewhere that I didn't want to or whatever the case may be. Um, another question that a lot of people ask me is like, well, what happens if there's an accident? Oh, cool. We're getting somewhere. What happens if there's an accident? Does it divert me around that? They are trying to figure out how they can do that safely because if you've ever used any other GPS thing, that's where we end up in a neighborhood we shouldn't have been in. <laughs> Not that it was a bad neighborhood. It was like you know, 50 feet long. It was very difficult. To, there was cars on both sides of us you know, going down the road, so it was pretty skinny. But then at the end, we had to make a 90-degree turn that uh, was very difficult. So um, that's what happens, you know, when you're in a car, no big deal, let's cut through the neighborhood and, and we can do that. But in an RV, you can't, you know, so they have not figured out a way to just do that on the fly when you're just navigating that. Um, there's a lot of people that have suggested it and they're working on it, but they just don't have that part of it. So, but that's the differences between those two, okay? And if you don't hear the question, Raise your hand and say, hey, what was the question? Because I can repeat it. I just forget about that. So, yes, sir. Um, would you say it's very beneficial for someone that really doesn't stay at campgrounds? Because I pretty much boondock all the time. So, if, if we can, we typically always boondock. We prefer not to stay in campgrounds unless they have pickleball courts because my wife likes to play pickleball. <laughs> but anyway, we don't want to pay the, the money. And so you can use any other um, program out there that lists whatever. It could just be your friend sending you a GPS coordinate, say, I stayed here and you can stay there too. Any of that stuff you can just enter in right at the top of the screen right here where it says um, search for location or park. You put a GPS in there, an address in there, whatever, you know, those different coordinates, it'll jump to it. So um, I typically use Campanium. I've used that for, you know, back for many, many years, for my five, six years now. I've always been a member of them, and I've used them. So um, I'll pull up a lot of stuff that way, but there's a lot of free campsites.net. You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to find free places to stay, even if it's just Walmarts and things, you know. So RV Parky will let you stay in an R, you know, or, you know, bring up different things. So you, whatever you find out there, however you find it, you can put it in here. The same way with roadside attractions. These guys don't have a big list of roadside attraction type things. I mean, they're always changing. You know, it'd be really hard. It's hard enough to keep up with the campgrounds. But we go out on the internet and we type in quirky and wherever it's at. So, for example, if you go out and type quirky um, Arizona, it'll come up with like 230 things around Arizona for you to see. You know, and I show that in my last video uh, training set that I put together. Uh, we use this thing called Obscura or something like that. We pull that up and, yeah, we pull that up and we see what those different places are. We usually use the map piece of it so we get kind of generally about where we're going to be. And then we dig into it and find different things to see in that area. And we pull out the address or the GPS coordinates and we add it onto our map. And we do it two different ways. We either, if it's something we're going to be driving by, like we're going across Texas and there's this cool zoo that closed down, well, it's just along the freeway. We're going to just stop there. We just put it as one of our stops for the day. 
So we'll just navigate to there and then we'll navigate to where we're going to camp later uh, and we'll stop and we'll visit that roadside oddity. Um, but if it's someplace like we're at the campground, what do we do in that particular area? Then we find all those roadside oddities that's in that particular area and we put it in the notes of that, of that camp. So that, I mean, we're spending all our time sitting around here during the winter. We put all that in there now so that when we're actually physically there this summer, then, you know, it's just listed there. We can just go to those GPS coordinates, you know, and you can create as many trips and as many stops as you want within the uh, trip wizard software so like when we were up in banff uh, national park up in um, canada we did it we used we were there for two weeks and staying there in a, a lake louise and we were going up into jasper and the, the uh, ice fields and everything we just created a whole nother map and then we just put all those things into that map for those days that we were going to go visit those that we had reservations for different places and then we just used that map to do our navigation as far as getting up into Jasper and all that kind of places without dealing with any changes on our main map. So you can create as many maps as you want, put all those in there, add anything in that's not in TripWizard, you can add it from external sources wherever you can find it. Yes? You were going to show us how to send it to someone else? Okay, good, because we got to hurry and get done. Uh, right up here you have Trip Tools, and if you click on Trip Tools, right here in the middle of the screen says Share Trip. You see that? So if you click on share trip, there's this option here that you can share with another trip user, trip wizard user. And you guys could use the same map and say you're traveling in a caravan or whatever. You, one person creates the map and maintains it and everyone and you share it with everybody and everybody brings it up and you get to navigate and, and interact just like they were you. Then we have a visitor's view. So the differences between these uh, when you're sharing them is whether to show all your addresses of where you're going to be uh, staying. And we have a website called tignoradventures.com. We take the, the uh, visitor's view and we put a link up there so people can click on that and they can see where we're at anytime. They don't have to be a member, they don't have to have access to anything, they just see it. Uh, ours is, we just show places, the general places we're gonna be. We don't have the physical addresses of where we're gonna be, unless it's RV parks and stuff. But you know, if I'm staying at my parents' house, I don't want people showing up at my parents' house saying, "Hey, we wanted to come and see you guys." So I don't share that part of it. And you can, you know, so you can share it privately or you can share uh, publicly where it shows all your addresses and everything. Did I answer your question now? <laughs> okay, it is there. Um, another thing I wanted to show you, just really quick, under this trip tools too, down here at the bottom, you have copy this trip. So this is how you would actually make a backup of the trip or you know make a copy and you know say i want to go try something else i can make a copy of it and do a bunch of changes there to see if it's working and everything so okay if that and without messing up my main trip and if you're going to delete a bunch of things like i was doing there it's best uh, to make a copy of it before you go out there and, and destroy everything and have to start over anyway so uh, you can make as many backups as you want so okay again we're going to cite uh 319 booth 319 come by and see us uh, we have stickers, uh, we have uh, different things, but on the back table there, we do have some brochures and cards that you can grab. Uh, check out our playlist on our YouTube channel, and thanks for coming. Thank you.